Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. I am Sue from OML Embroidery and OML Digitizing. So today is a redo of an awesome class we had. I have to redo the video because our old school, old school get it? Old school provider sucked and the video was terrible so I have to redo it and I am going to redo it because it was an awesome class and we learned so much. So it's a Halloween design and we're going to take the design to three or four different levels. Now this is, we're classing this as beginner intermediate, um, not absolute beginner. We're, I'm going to show you um, obviously that we're working in studio uh, and I'm going to bring in the design and we're going to work at with three different levels and we're going to add details and it's going to be awesome. Like I said, it was an absolutely awesome class and it's going to be an awesome video this time. So we're going to start off with bringing in the image. So we click image and we go import. Now I have this one nicely stashed at my desktop for easy reference. Now I'm not going to worry about this because I'm going to show you how to resize it. This is obviously huge and we probably don't want it that big, although we do want it bigger than normal because I am going to show you the gradient and it has to be relatively big for you guys to see it properly. So let's go to image background or sorry, edit image window. And we're going to go, we don't want to change the angle. We want to change the size that may be a little bit too big and it's going to take a little while to generate the stitches. So we'll just make it a little bit smaller. That's probably good enough, probably bigger than what you want, but that's okay. We've got to be able to see it. So now that's resized. You should always remember that you need to digitize at the size that you want your final project to be. So always remember that if you're going to digitize this at a six by 10 and want it down to a four by four, you can, but you're going to lose a lot of detail and things will change if you do um, say a column stitch that looks really good on this size when you bring it down smaller It's going to be that size. It's going to be really big the density will be okay But all your detail work that you're going to spend so much time doing is not going to work out very well So we don't really want to do that. So I've resized it um, The other thing too is when you're doing gradients You can't do gradients too small. They lose their effect and it doesn't look very good so I'm making it bigger than what I want just to show you guys the details of it. So let's start off now. He's a pretty detailed pumpkin, but let's start off at the beginner level and we are just going to do a pumpkin and of course the middle to bend and I'm going to do this quickly because we should all know how to plot out our stitches. And I'm on a new computer and I'm not sure if I like it yet the mouse is kind of clicky but that's okay i gotta get used to it so bear with me a little bit it's a it's a good pc and it should be good for all the videos that we're gonna do so we're gonna be prepared and we have a new microphone so this one this is a professional level microphone and the sound should be absolutely awesome there might be a tiny bit of echo but until we get you know an actual real recording studio that's about as good as it gets Okay, so slide that one in. Now we've done our pumpkin and I'm thinking our pumpkin looks pretty good. He's going to be pumpkin-y and we don't want him blue. We want him nice pumpkin orange, right? Okay, so now we have the base of the pumpkin checking in 3D. Yep, looks like a pumpkin. That's fine. So let's cut out the holes for the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So we select the item. And then we go over here to the left and it's the same picture as the fill stitches, but it has a hole in it. So that's what we're going to use. And you go right on and you plot all your stitches. Again, I'm just doing them super quickly so you can get the idea of what we're doing. Click. Try to get as close as you can to these shapes. Slide up. And we are going to generate. Now, if you make a mistake while this is done generating and while this is highlighted and you see mine has a red around it, you can move it. All right. It didn't erase all this. It's just not showing, but you, this is the time when you can move it around. 
once you um, hit enter or hit your pointer key, that's it. We'll do enter. Click off. All right, I almost had it. Now we need to regenerate. You don't have to, but you can just to see that it did in fact cut a hole. You can kind of see it over here on the right, but not really. Okay, so let's do the next hole. Same thing, same thing. You could uh, copy it over, but I, I'm just gonna manually do it just in case they're a little bit different because I don't think pumpkins are carved out perfectly the same, right? So let's go, we'll do it on the nose and generate. This is your chance to move stuff around. Click off, now you're done. So click on this. Let's do the nose holes. They're pretty, pretty basic guys here. And we just keep happily cutting the holes out so we don't have too many layers of stuff because we're going to make the eyes pretty darn fancy. So let's generate. Okay, so we have one nose hole done. Let's do the other. I guess it's called the nostril, not a nose hole, but you know, I'm cutting out holes. So that works for me. Again, you guys be a lot more precise. I don't think I like my new mouse, but that's okay. There you go. Fix it. No, we're good. There we go, click on the whole thing again. All right, let's do the same thing for the last time with the mouth. And this one's pretty straightforward and it looks pretty good. So I'm just following along and if you can't see it, you can brighten up the picture or zoom in a little bit, I guess is the easiest way. I can see it pretty clearly Again, you guys zoom in and be as precise as you need. I'm just trying to rush through it quickly because you don't need to sit and watch me plot. There we go. Yep, looking good. This one has a little dent in it because of course you don't carve out a perfect pumpkin. I kind of like that little detail. It seems to be only on the bottom ones. Perfect, looking good. I can still see everything clearly, so just moving along. Okay, and then slide it in and we're good. So generate, there we go. Now our pumpkin, it'll take a second to do. Now that's kind of good. As I'm looking at it here, I realize I made a mistake. What is the mistake? The mistake is the stem. The stem needs to stitch out first. So let's go back and do that and I'll show you how to fix it to put it in the right sewing order. Because if we did it like this, it's gonna sew out on top of the pumpkin, which may be fine, but to me, it looks like it is behind the pumpkin. So I want to do it that way. You may see it a different way and that's fine. So let's go here and I want a little bit of overlap so there's no gap and uh, again, you can make that better. We'll leave everything the same. And there we go, let's change that to, let's do kind of a darker green. So I just left click, hold, slide down to where you want it. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to right click and drag it up. See, I'm dragging it. Oh, I can't take it off there. Let go and we're gonna do insert before before. So there we go. Now the stitch order. It's going to stitch this out and then our pumpkin. So what's the next thing? We could leave it like this. I think they got, whoops. I think he looks pretty good. Let's check him out in 3D. That's a basic pumpkin. That's not bad. I could have done the eyes a little bit better, but all in all, I really don't think it's that bad at all. Just a basic pumpkin. Yay, beginner level. So why don't we fill in the pumpkin's eyes, nose, and mouth. So the way you do this, you can, there's, there's, I say on just about every video, there are more than one way of doing each thing. So I'm showing you my way. There may be a shorter way, there may be a better way, but this is what I do and it makes sense to me. So you need to find out what makes sense to you and do it this way. So you can, if you feel comfortable, if you feel happy with it, you can sit and plot these all out again and put them in and have them stitch out first so there's no um, edges showing or no gaps. But I'm gonna show you a really super fast way that you should use a lot. And it's up here, these are my two favorite things, transform and convert. And we're gonna go to convert. 
And a lot of people get really confused with this because it seems confusing. Fill to opening, outline to connection, a column to outline. But you have to think about what, what we're doing. Now, what are we doing? We have holes that we want filled in. So create outline from fill. No, we're, we're not doing that. We may do that after. Create column from fill. No, we're, we don't want the eyes and the nose and the mouth to be column stitches because it's quite big and we don't want that. It's not going to work. It won't stitch out. Create fill from opening. That's an opening and we want fill. Bam, that's what we want right there. And it doesn't look like it showed up here. You have to look over to the right and there they are. Why don't we drag down, left click, drag down another color. And then all you have to do is generate. And now we can see them all. And if you look, they fit in perfectly. They've got a little bit of overlap and it's absolutely perfect. And that was, you know, one click and then change the color. Awesome. Have to love it. Have to love it. The other thing that's really cool is they're all separate pieces. So if you want to do something to this yellow, that yellow, you can change it around. You can, I mean, if you move them, you can move them, but you know, it's not going to look right. Why don't I um, edit, undo, and edit, undo, so it's in the perfect spot. I could have pulled that in, but I want it to be how the system set it up. So um, the first thing we're going to do now, we should look, sorry, we should look. Yes, okay, that's, that's a basic pumpkin, still looking good. You might want to put a quick outline on it. We can do all that after, still looking good. But now we're gonna kick it up a little bit and we're gonna bring it into an intermediate level. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this beginner pumpkin, absolutely nothing wrong at all. It will stitch out beautifully and look great. But let's talk about details. And this is the difference between a beginner level and an intermediate to an expert level. And we're gonna uh, dabble into the intermediate level on this one. So what, what do you see when you look at the image of the pumpkin? Well, I see lines in here. I mean, disregard all the, the colors. You'd have to make this really big to do all this color gradient. But I see carves in here that give the pumpkin more of a 3D shape. So why don't we do that? Let's do some carving. So you select the parts that you want to carve and you go over to the left and right below our favorite hole cutting tool, is a carving tool. And again, it's the same symbol as the fill stitch, but it has little lines through it indicating carving. So once you have it selected, all you have to do is click on that and plot your stitches. Now you don't want it to go over obviously, but let's put it down to here and we do want a curve in it. Okay, let's generate. And that, that gives you a chance to move stuff. It's gonna take a minute, because remember I'm doing this quite large so you can see the details. Well, once you click off, that really doesn't look like much, does it? No, let's go to 3D and I'll show you what it does. Look, it carves a line in the stitches. Now, if you are playing around with fancy stitches, which I encourage everyone to do, that's basically what it is. It's, it's carved out, it's all one color, and it's carved out to give it you know, more depth. And uh, I think it looks great as long as you use it appropriately. It has to be big enough to use, to look good. If it's too small, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, what happens when you carve something too small, um, it won't have the same effect. So the bigger, the better. This is really taking a long time to think, sorry. It is a really good computer, but it just thinks a lot, I guess. So let's keep doing our carvings and you'll see the effect will be really good when we're done. And it's going to be, you know, more of a 3D pumpkin, not quite so flat, not jumping out at you, but looking pretty darn good, I think. I love the carvings. I like to use them um, if we're thinking Halloween stuff, on bats for their wings and different things instead of you know feathers you can just do lines in it and it has a great effect as long as it's big enough so there we are let's check what we have and see that looks pretty good i think we need to do the bottom ones too and i'll just do them really quickly again as always you guys take your time and follow it along perfectly and do better than i am 
I'm just doing it for speed and getting used to my new mouse that I don't like. You can also see, by the way, if you're wondering what's going on, if you look down here in the parts, you see the same symbol that we saw over at the left. And that's how you know that part, the pumpkin is the whole part. And then these are the additions to it. And you can see that they're carving. So if you want to select one and it's kind of hard to do it, it's easier to go down here. If you want to make adjustments to it or what have you, that's the easiest way of doing it. Or if you just simply forget what you were doing, that's another way of going, oh yeah, I was doing carvings because you can see them clearly in there. That one's a bit off, but that's okay. We don't mind. Yeah, generating again. Well, I suppose it's not too bad. I've certainly had worse computers. This is our dedicated to our videos and our classes, so um, it works and it's gonna be great. Um, there we go, we've got one more carving to do, then we can take a look at our pumpkin and see how good he looks with a little more detail added on. And I'm also gonna show you why you can't do carving too small and what it's gonna look like. So let that generate. There we go, let's look at it in 3D. See, now that looks a lot better. Um, of course, when you stitch this out, the effect isn't going to be quite this dramatic and it'll be a lot smoother. This looks like it was, you know, you carved a line down there. When you stitch it out, it'll be much softer and it'll blend a little bit better, but it'll also give it quite a bit of definition, quite a bit. So why don't we just, just for fun, let's zoom in and I'm just gonna show you what happens if it's too small. Now we're quite zoomed in there. So we have it selected. Let's go to the carving tool and let's carve this guy here and put a little curve on it, just what we're doing. And you'll see, yeah, and you'll see it worked. It did work, but there's really not enough stitches on this side or that side. I mean, the line part is about half of it and that's in 3D. So I wouldn't recommend it on small things. Do play around, but I think it loses it, its effect if you do it on small things. You don't, you don't really get the look that you want. So there we are, back to normal, yay. Now let's start, actually I can zoom in, let's start working on the eyes. Let's go back and take a quick peek at the image. Now, if you're looking at the image, you see this part is dark green, green, yellow. And that's a gradient color. And this is what we want to do. Again, the same with carving, but especially with gradients. The bigger, the better. It really looks beautiful when you do it on a big thing. Think sunset, the background of a picture, or the sun changing color, or something like that with the gradient. If you're doing it on this, and I'm going to show you afterwards, it works, again, just like the carving. It just doesn't look the greatest. So we want to make things look as best as they can. So what we're gonna do, we have this eye selected. Normally, I would do a duplicate, right? And, but for this one, what we wanna do is copy and paste. And I'm gonna show you why. Copy and then paste. And it doesn't look like it did anything, but it did if you look over here. And what it's done is it's placed another one exactly precisely on top. And that's going to save you a little bit of fiddly time. If you do duplicate, it's, it moves it down a little bit. It offsets it. And you're going to have to set it exactly precisely on the other one for the effect to work properly. So copy and paste, not what I usually do, but yes for gradients. Now we're gonna make this one a bright green color. So now I have the two layers. The first thing I'm gonna do is go into parameters on the green one, which is the top one. Now for both of these layers, we do not need the underlay. Because right now what it's stitching out is underlay yellow, underlay green. And that's gonna make everything, you know, pretty thick. The density is a bit off and you don't need underlay when we're trying to blend stuff. How are you going to blend these squares in? It just doesn't work. So we want to take that underlay off. And plus, the other thing with the underlay is exactly the same on the yellow part. So it's just not going to look good. So let's take that off. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused with gradients. They select a gradient, 
click apply and nothing happened. Well, why? I selected my gradient. Is it over here in effect? Where is it? You have to change this number up here and a lot of people forget it. So if your gradient isn't working, you have to pick a number. Now, if you pick a low number, you know, like one, it's not much of a gradient. You can see it. It really doesn't look very nice. Are we in 3D? Let's um, generate stitches and let's go into 3D. Yeah, see, you really can't. It looked more on the other view. Um, doesn't work. So you have to pick a big number and I'm thinking like 30 will do that big. So 10 subtle effect, 20, you know, medium effect, 30, you, you're going to get what you want. Let's apply and let's look at the different options that we have. Now, again, same with the carvings. This is pretty hard to see. It doesn't look very nice at all because it looks like the green stitches are plunked down and it's kind of terrible looking. Let's zoom out. You can see it a little bit better. Still looks awful. When you stitch this out, the subtle, the effect will be much more subtle and they will blend. Now, the other key to gradient is picking similar colors. If you have, um, you know, a light pink and say black, it's not going to blend it very well. The colors will be blended, but it won't look as smooth as you want. So you kind of want to pick you know, a dark blue and a dark green or a light blue and a light green, light pink and light yellow. I mean, those are weird combinations, but you see what I'm saying? If you pink, if you pick light pink and uh, white, that would look good. Light pink and gray, that would look good. Light pink and black, not so much unless it's really big. So try to keep your colors close in the same family and it'll look better. So, okay, we've got our gradient. It, again, doesn't look the greatest. It will stitch out way better. You just have to get used to looking at it like this. Now, there's different gradients to pick from, and they each have a different effect. So this one is darker, and there's way more light in it. So you can see if you follow along the green, that's stitched in there quite thick, and then it gets looser, more spread apart, more spread apart. So this is quite a big space in between, and that will have a lovely effect. Let's try another one, because we always like to try stuff. This one is completely different. Look how that one does it. Dark, light, very far apart, and then again. And that gives a fantastic effect to it. I love it, I absolutely love it. Let's try this one. This is more blending, so it's less of the dark and more spread out here. I think I like this one the best, closest to the picture that we want. So that's awesome. Let's generate stitches. And again, this honestly will look better when you stitch it out. It's kind of tough to see. So let's try the same thing on a smaller. This is only a tiny portion of what the eyeball is. So what did we do? We went first, we went copy and then we went paste. So it goes on the exact same spot and we don't have to mess around with anything. Let's make the top layer green. Let's go into right click and into parameters. And let's first thing, I should have gone on the um, first part. You need to, the, the yellow layer of the eye, you need to go in and take off your underlay. We do not need it. So let's go gradient and you click on the word and this comes up and it's a lot faster than clicking it from zero to 30. And let's do apply. Now you can see clearly it's the same effect. Actually, it's not the same effect, but let's make it the same effect because this is gonna look worse, but it's not gonna look the same. It doesn't have that um, graduation of color. And it's because it's so small, there's not really enough room to do that in. So the bigger, the better. And we're going to do the whole pumpkin after, and you can really see the effect. But we're going to leave that anyways, just, just because it's there. Let's do the other eye really quickly because um, repetition is good. Oh, wait, what did we do wrong? Huh, did you catch that? We have to copy, and then we have to paste. And again, there's many ways of doing the gradient. This is how I find the easiest 
and I think it's, and I picked the wrong color. Let's pick the same color. Actually, why don't we pick a different color? Let's do it a little bit darker and you might be able to see the effect or it might look worse. So working on the dark green, let's go into parameters and let's take off all of our underlay because we don't need it and we need to do it on the eye layer underneath the yellow eye layer. Let's apply, click on the word gradient because we're cranking it to 30. There we go, and we're gonna pick one. Let's pick the same one that we had that we liked and apply. Now you can see it's a little more dramatic because of the dark, and probably this one would look better. This one is okay, but I think the green is a little bit too dark, and it shows up, uh, I'm trying to explain it, it shows up less as a blend, more of, oh, you put a layer on top. Still good, but not the wow factor you're looking for. So you need to keep the colors closer. Generate stitches, and now we just, we're gonna leave that one nose hole so you can see the difference. Let's do the mouth. So copy, and let's go paste. Excellent, let's turn it, let's go back to our light green that we liked. Let's go into parameters. Let's take off the underlay because we don't need it. Gradient, and click it up to 30. So we remember to do our number. We remember to pick the style of gradient, and I think we're gonna do that one just to see how it looks. Click apply, and see that one, because it's such an odd shape, I'm not sure that looks so good. So let's try another one. This one has a lot more green in it. Yeah, that would just kind of make it greeny. Let's try one like this, more definite. Maybe we can get darker. Oh, see, now it's showing up a little bit better. Okay, I like that one a little bit better. Let's try the last one just because we're here, and we'll do it and see. Every shape is different. Now, see, I like the one before a lot better. Excellent. Let's generate. And let's look at our pumpkin a little bit further back. You can see how it blends. Now, can you see the difference there between the lighter green that goes with the yellow better and the darker? You can really see the lines of the dark green, even, even in the crappy 3D, whereas this one seems to blend a little bit. And that's what we're looking for. That would look really good on uh, when you stitch it out. This one, not quite so much, but yet not bad either. Not bad either. So this is more of an intermediate pumpkin. We've done carving and we've done a whole bunch of gradients, which will kick it up a notch and make it look even more detailed. What other things could you do? Just because the picture doesn't have it doesn't mean that you could, can't add stuff. I would actually add an outline to the pumpkin. So why don't we do that? Just because I think it looks good. Create outline from fill. Now, again, when you do that, and that was just one click, transform or sorry convert create uh, create outline from fill let's go in and make it black because it brings it in now look at that that makes a huge difference and it gives it you know a little more depth and a little more clarity let's do this guy too whoops convert create create outline from fill and again it turned it the same color we're going to drag down the black you could digitize a quick pumpkin leaf. You could do a couple of swirlies, add in details, the whole bit. So he's looking pretty good. He's a couple steps up from our basic one. So now the next thing I wanna do is to add even more detail. It's big enough, we can add quite a bit of detail. And what I'm gonna do is turn off the mouth with these little eyeballs and whoa, that makes you, you can see the, how the gradient works, quite thick there, thinned out. Um, we're gonna turn that off though, even though I like it. And let's go back into the normal view so you can see other details that I would like to do. So the way I see it, I see this as pretty cool. Now these are the parts and they're showing in yellow, but they make the pumpkin look thick. So now we have the pumpkin looking round and it has some shape and it has some depth and color. Let's make it look a little thicker. So I'm going to pick out these details. If you can see them, they're kind of yellowy on the green. And I'm just going to show you how to do that the way I see it. You may see it a little differently. You may not like this effect. 
I thought it looked pretty cool. And we're going to have to obviously move the stitching order because we want these guys to stitch out before our outline. But for right now, we're not going to worry about that. We are just going to do it this way. So you see the outlines, you see what I'm doing. So now that's not going to look the greatest because it's going to stick out on top. We want to make that our bright yellow. And again, we'll move, we'll move it so it looks better. Let's do a couple so we can get, we can play around with the effects that I'm going to do because this one is kind of groovy. And I'm just going to do it right on the line or just a little bit underneath because we are going to be stitching these out first. Let's do another one. And you can, if you look right in, you can see exactly where to place them. And that looks great. Let's just do one more. Let's just do one more because we're here. So that in and of itself would probably look quite good. Now remember to match up to what your digitizing is, not necessarily the picture. I made this one in a different angle. The picture goes here. So if you were to put this here, this highlight that we're doing, it wouldn't look good. So remember to match it to your own stitches, however you choose to do them. Okay, so we've got three of them. That's okay, let's step back. Do you see the effect that it has? And that is okay, like that, and I think it makes it look the pumpkin, it makes it look thicker. And you can see, rather than here, that's a really good detail that gives you, that gives you a little more reality. But I would like this to blend a little bit better, because right now it's just kind of chunked on. And let's go back, let's go back to our favorite parameters. Let's move this over here so you guys can see. We do not want underlay on it because we're trying to blend. Uh, most of the time underlay, yes, you need underlay for sure, thank you very much. When you're trying to blend colors or if you're doing layers on purpose or shading, you do not want the underlay at all. So get rid of it, click apply. Now we're gonna go here to this Max Random Broadening. And it's a funny name. Uh, most people just leave it alone because they don't know what it means. But it means basically feathering. And you have two sides. This is a first side, this is the second side or opposite. Um, and what we're gonna do, let's put the number, and I'm gonna exaggerate it quite a bit so you can see the effect very clearly and then we'll put it down to something a little more reasonable. So what it's going to do, it's going to put a jagged edge on it. And this jagged edge, obviously way too big, but this jagged edge is going to blend in with the stitches that we already have. So it's going to make a shadowy, lighty effect that's going to look fantastic and add, you know, kick it up another notch. So let's put it at about two because you can't do this because this is going over your orange and underneath and we don't want any of that to show. So let's try a two. That's pretty good, maybe even a little bit more. Let's try 2.5. See, doesn't that look good? Generate. Now I'm gonna click off that and I'm gonna slip back a bit. Can you see the difference? That's kind of blendy, kind of airy. This The straight does look good, but I'm liking that. Let's try it on this one and I'll do it from a distance so we can see. Let's go to parameters. I'm gonna bring it over here so we can play around with that. Random broadening. Let's have this one a little, let's try it on one and see. See, it didn't do a whole lot. Let's try 1.5. I still want it to be a defined shape because I think that one looks particularly good for the 3D-ness. Now see what that did? And that's gonna blend in instead of having, you know, basically a straight line of it, that's going to blend it in. And I think that looks really, really good. I think that's, and that's a nice touch and a nice effect. So why don't we take these guys and I just used my shift key. Why don't we put them up? Now we don't want it before the mouth, so we can do it. Let's try it here. Insert after is what I meant to do. Let's turn on our mouth and let's turn on our other mouth piece in yellow. Now it's kind of hard to see. Let's uh, check it in 3D. Really hard to see because I think I did the green over it, didn't I? Woohoo, I put it in the wrong spot. That's okay, easily fixed. And this is why you go back and you check everything. Insert after, now you can see it. 
This is why I always, because it was impossible to see anything in, in the normal view. So you go into 3D and you're like, hey, my yellow didn't show up. Why not? It's because it's in the wrong spot. So easy fix. And if you keep track of everything that you're doing it, you won't stitch things out in the wrong order. Because if this stitches out before the yellow mouth part, you won't see it at all and you've wasted your time. So it's best to keep you know, keep an eye on everything as you're doing it. And I flip back and forth to the 3D view all the time. Now I'm just adding, see I clicked the wrong one. Sometimes it's easier to pick it out over here to the right. I kind of like that. Right click, parameters. One of my favorite things, you can do so much in here. Let's make this one a little more dramatic. To let's make it three and see how it looks. Play around, see how it looks. See that one might look good. There you go, what do you think? So just added a little touch to it. This one looks really good. I left this one a bit sharper, I like it. This one looks really good too. And you still have the effect that it's 3D and um, it looks really good. So all about the details. Um, I think I would leave this other nose hole white, or sorry, yellow and not do any gradient. It doesn't look that bad, but I would do it. So why don't we do one more thing to bump up this guy. So let's do, oh, I know another thing we can do that I forgot. If you look on the pumpkin stock, it has a bit of carving. So why don't we quickly carve this guy out? And it's just along here, kind of this kind of thing just to give it more, because pumpkin stocks are quite thick. So we want it to look like that. There we go. Again, doesn't look like anything. Switch back and forth to your 3D. Yep, I like that, forgot to do that. So why don't we take our whole pumpkin, why don't we copy our pumpkin, and why don't we paste him on the same spot. Now, this is the top one, and this is the bottom one. So we're gonna turn the bottom one, well, six and one half dozen in the other. Let's leave the bottom one so it's orangey. Let's do this one and we're gonna change it to a dark pumpkin color. That's gonna change everything, uh, but what we're gonna do, why don't we make this one a gradient? Because if you look back at the picture, let's go to the image tab, you can see that the bottom of the pumpkin is dark and the top part of it is lighter. So it has a light source coming here and these are shadowies. We can't obviously, at this size, we're only doing it six by six, we obviously can't get in all those details, but we can come pretty darn close. So why don't we do that? So let's click on our darker part of the pumpkin. Let's go to parameters. Now we're gonna go to, and I'm gonna pull closer so you can see. Let's go to our gradient. Now, first thing, let's do the number. Let's try it at a 20 and see, so you can see the difference. Now this is much bigger. So we want it lighter on the top, we were thinking. So let's try this one. It's gonna take a minute, there's a lot of stitches. See how cool that looks? I, I kinda like that one, what do we wanna do? That one is kind of dark around the top, less blended. I think we want this to be, let's try it at a bit higher. I'm not getting quite the effect that I want. And then we're gonna try one more thing because I forgot to do something. Generate stitches. Gradient is, it is kind of difficult to work with, so it's better to work with it in 3D. Now we can see what we did. I actually really like that because look, it's a little bit darker at top, on the top and darker on the bottom. Let's step it back and see what a subtle look that is. So the pumpkin is still orange, but he's got some shading on it. Now, how easy is that for a great effect? Let's try it now that we can see it in 3D. Let's try. It's gonna take a second. There's a lot of stitches because it's quite big. See, that's darker, lighter, mm, not so much, right? Not so much. Try this one. This will make it darker all the way around so there's less blending, right? Yeah, no, thinking about it, I want more of the, the pumpkin-y orange to show through, the actual orange. 
But wow, isn't that isn't that great? I think I like this one the best. Play around with it though till you find out what you want, the best one. I like that. I think it's opposite of what I said, but I really like it. I think it's fantastic. Um, again, no underlay, and I forgot to do that again on the first one. You don't need the underlay on anything. So now our other problem is our outline. So if you're looking at it like this, the outline, it's kind of covered up. So what we want to do is move all of them, but I'm just going to move one. And now you can clearly see it. These ones are bad, but I would move all of these black ones. Usually you want the underlining done at the end, at the end. So I was going to group these guys so we can see what it is and then drag and drop, insert after. So there we go. I, I think he's looking really good. I think that looks fantastic. So we've taken a plain pumpkin, we've added lots of details, we've added outlinings, gradients galore, carvings. And when this guy stitches out, he's gonna look fantastic. Now I'm gonna delete everything I did because I'm gonna show you a different way to do the pumpkin. There are many ways of doing it. Now, I always say that when Don and I are working on a project, he will see the embroidery one way in his mind and I see it a complete other way. And I think that's absolutely awesome. Now you can see our gradient, how it worked out. And that's a pretty nice gradient there. I like it and I hate to delete it, but there it is. So I always say think outside the box and come up with different ways of doing things just there's no right or wrong way of doing something it's how you see it and what you can do with it and when I saw this I saw a totally different way of doing it as well I like the gradient thing and especially on something this big awesome so what we're gonna do is the um, the gradient there we're gonna do this here column stitches now I am going to do a whole video on column stitches but for now, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown because this is a perfect thing to do on a pumpkin. So I clicked on there, column stitches, and I plotted down one, and I'm gonna plot down another and put it on top. And then I'm going to one, and I want you to look, let me zoom in there. Do you see this arrow? This arrow, because a lot of people don't do column stitches because they find them incredibly complicated because no matter what you click it on the wrong side and it gets all twisted and it doesn't work this little arrow tells you what side you've just plotted so the next point that you plot is on the opposite side see how that changed so you can go in uh, and change you know the curvature so that arrow set tells you the size that you just plotted so I know I need to do it on this side. And don't get confused about this dragging over, it's just telling you you haven't completed a stitch yet. So then you go here, and then there, and bend it in a little bit however you want it. So again, there's the arrow, there's the side, there's the side. Now, when I plot out these kind of stitches, I go ahead and I do them, and then I readjust. I do them and I readjust. I do the whole thing and readjust. When Don does it, he plots one, you know, kind of bar of it, and then he readjusts it, and then he goes on to the next one, and so on and so forth till he's done. Whichever way you like to do it, it's fine. You have time to fix everything up and get nice smooth curves going on because you can adjust everything. Now, these lines here are the angles, basically. Um, you want the stitches to turn a little bit and then go straight and then turn a little bit more and That's how how do you move them? Somebody asked me that how do you change the angle? You just move it look how that angle changes I mean obviously you're gonna have to reset some other stitches But if you want the angle to be even a little more dramatic You can do it that way and just and move them. That's all you have to do Look I moved two of them and that makes it a little more smooth so where are we? We're on this one. It's hard to see in there, but the arrow, so then we're gonna plot here and we're gonna plot here. So it's it's really a lot easier to do once you get the idea of which side to do it on. And then the end, so there's my arrow, so I wanna plot it here. And then if you look up here, 
you have no finish and you have no generate and a lot of people get confused on that and that's because you haven't completed the stitch or you haven't completed that block there's no way it ends there and then it doesn't do anything so you need to put one more down well we don't want it to end like that that doesn't that looks kind of square so what do you do just move this on top of the other one and fix your angle and now you have a nice point that it's going into and that's a basic rundown of column stitches another thing I should have pointed out at the beginning over on the right here you need to be on B this works with B there's a B and C like I said I'm gonna do a whole video on how to do these properly but this is just a quick rundown now if you look up to the left you see I have my finish object and my generate stitches so now you can complete it so if you want to move your angles around that's fine but wait don't complete it yet because we know this is a six by six large thing the, these satin stitches are not going to go across that far it's not going to work so we need to go over here and we click on strips and i'm going to change the strips for those of you wondering what it is now you're going to know so i up the number just a little bit and then i hit generate and okay that doesn't look like a whole lot but let's go into 3d look at that look what it does now this is where your angles are all involved and making it nice and nice points wow isn't that awesome and you can go in and you can let's i'll give you a little look whoops there we go right parameters and strips let's put it down to less what it came with look at how it changes so you can get a lot of different looks with just learning how to plot out the stitches properly See, that's thicker. I think that looks great. So let's leave that at 20. Let's do that again. That was fun. Let's do that again. So we're going down here to this column stitches. I'm going to plot the first one, then plot the second one, put them together, and then start. Click. And let's do it this way, and then we'll change ways. One, two. One, two. Right? There's your arrows. One, two two one two let's do it that far and let's make our adjustments so let's adjust here and what I want to ensure on this one for this design is that this side touches over a little bit because it's gonna make it look a little bit thicker because we're doubling up on them and it's gonna give that carved out look that we had before so try to make them as smooth as possible. Obviously you can't see the design there through the eye, but just make a guesstimate. These are a bit, a bit sharp, so I'll pull that one in. That's looking better. Keep an eye on your angles. You want it to overlap by one line. Now you're looking, okay, that was the last one I did. Let's do the opposite. One, two, let's adjust. Let's adjust this one. You can always go back and fix it. And you're aiming for a nice smooth curve of it nice and smooth to make it look good I am NOT going to spend a whole lot of time on it but let's let's keep it going and keep the overlap I think is very important very important indeed there we go there we go so you should be able to get them going on so opposite to the arrow and then again, people think, okay, well, I've placed it. Look how I've placed it. And it looks like it fits in, but you look up here, there's nothing you can do. It's not finished. So it wants another point and put the point, put them over top of each other and you have a nice angle in there. Now, I would honestly play around with these and I like to get it a little bit smoother, quite a bit smoother because you can see it goes bloip, 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 bloip. We don't want that. So play around with it, get it smooth, get your angles really nice, and make sure you click on strips, because we want strips. Let's do less. So the last one we had 19, this one let's do 15, and now we can generate. There we go, let's hop into our 3D, and look at that, doesn't that look good? Now you see what I mean, I could have done it a little bit better, but you see where they doubled up is that definition that I want. <coughs> now the other thing that I've done is I've made this more dense 
last dance, this middle one do last dance, and then repeat the pattern. And that'll give it even more of a 3D look and uh, look pretty awesome. So, so far, absolutely loving it. I think that looks great. That is a wonderful technique. Um, of course, you have to move these guys to stitch first and then the eyeballs over. You don't want the pumpkin going all the way through because it's supposed to be holes. So put everything in the right order before you stitch it out. But it is a great technique that you can master with a little bit of practice. Remember the arrows, don't get frustrated. And you'll be a whiz at doing uh, column stitches if you can do the strips. Um, this is also great for quilting and doing different things. It's just a great technique to master. So, okay, that's it for today. Um, it was a great class. This is hopefully a great video filled with tons of information. And we've done the same design at a beginner level. We kicked it up to intermediate. We kicked it up to intermediate with more details and even more details. And then we changed the whole thing all from one picture. Here it is. So um, we're going to add this file in. You guys try, see what you can do with it. Come up with some different stitches. Practice with your gradient. Pick some nice colors and uh, send it over to us. So if you have any questions on the video, you can send us an email. If you want to post your homework, you can post it on Facebook. And we have a page on Facebook. It's OML Embroidery. We also have a group and the group is all about Embered digitizing and our classes and any questions you may have. It's basically an open place where you can ask questions, post your homework, post your work, anything you want that has to do with Embered, um, anything that you're working on that you're proud of, show it off. It's awesome. And the Facebook group is called Embered Happy Digitizing because I always say happy digitizing because I think everyone should be happy digitizing. If you're frustrated, you're not doing it right. It should be creative and fun, and that's what I try really hard to do. So again, that's a Facebook group called Embered Happy Digitizing. Join us, post your homework. Thank you for watching. I will see everyone on the next video. And happy digitizing, and keep calm and digitize on. Thanks, everybody.